Hi friends, thank you so much for coming back to craft with me today and welcome if you're new here to my channel. My name is Alyssa and today I'm going to make what I hope is going to be a quick and easy cookbook themed junk journal and I'm going to use this box of Swedish pancake mix. My mother-in-law actually gave this to us for Easter and these taste amazing by the way. <laughs> But when I saw the box, I knew immediately that it was going to become a journal. So I'm going to just share my process with you and just have fun with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take this box and cut this panel off. Actually, I'm going to open it up here at the bottom. And then I'll just cut off this side. Or I wonder if I could just rip it. There we go. Okay, so maybe I'll just, maybe I'm not even gonna cut anything. <laughs> I pretty much want to keep the box looking the way that it is because I think it's so cute for a cookbook or recipe themed or food type of junk journal. So I really don't want to cover anything up. So I think just to make it a little bit more sturdy, maybe I'm just going to glue down these extra flaps. So let me grab my glue. I really don't have any idea in mind with this. I'm kind of just jumping right into it. So I'm going to start with the top and the bottom flap here. Actually, maybe I'll just cut off a little section here and here. Just so it's not interfering with any of the edges. I'll just cut this one a little bit more. Okay. I am going to cover all of this up with some paper, but this piece here, I think I'll just bring it over and maybe I'll do like a side pocket. So I'm actually just going to cut off this flap and the one at the bottom here. Okay, so that'll be my little side pocket, but I do just want to cover up this whole side here. But I'm just going to go ahead and glue down these other flaps. So this is obviously going to be my spine, so I'm just going to bring this down. All right, and then I'm just gonna cut these edges a little bit.
All right, and I'll just put this flap over top. All right, so that way, at least my cover here has nice clean edges on the front and in the back. Okay, so while this is all drying, I think what I'm going to do is cut out first a little strip of paper to cover my spine here. So the spine area is about one and three quarters of an inch wide by a little more than seven inches tall. So maybe I'll just do seven inches just to make it easy. So let me grab a piece of paper. So I'm just going to use a regular plain colored piece of cardstock here. I think this is 75 pound cardstock. And let's see. I'm just going to start by cutting this down. Let's just say to three and three quarters. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just score along the sides here. So I'm going to score at one inch. And then I'm going to score at one and three quarters because that's how wide my spine was. So this part is going to go on my spine and these are going to be like the little flaps. So basically this piece is just going to go right here onto my spine and then the little flaps will get attached to my inside covers. And actually I need to cut this down again to seven inches tall. So seven inches. And then this piece should be good. So I'm going to just glue this piece down first. I'm going to start with just the spine area and place this down. Then I'll do my little side flaps. And then I'm probably going to take the same paper and just cover up my inside covers here. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be the exact size of my inside covers because I'm going to cover this up with another piece of paper. So let me see. This was just my leftovers. Let me just cut it down to four and a quarter by seven and this one too I'm basically just covering up the whole inside before I go and put my decorative paper over top 
So these two pieces will just cover up my inside here. I really needed a new blade like weeks ago and I have not gotten around to getting a new one. So this will just go right over top. And this side. Okay, and I'm going to gently just bring in the sides a little bit. Okay, so that's the inside all covered up. That will also give me just a little bit more sturdiness to the journal. But I kind of wanted to just put this first layer on. And then I'm going to take another sheet of paper, this one, and I'm just going to glue it over top. Probably just on my covers. I don't think I'm going to cover up the spine again because it's the spine, I don't really care, or I don't mind this color for the spine. So let me just see how wide my pages are. They will be about five inches wide by seven inches tall. So I'm just gonna cut out two of that size. And that paper is from the Heirloom palette here, palette paper pack by Park Lane. This is from Joann's. And I will be using a few more of these papers as well for my signatures. All right, so here are my two sheets. They're just gonna go like this. And this paper is a little bit thinner. So that's also why I wanted to just line the inside first with some heavier cardstock. Okay, so my inside's all covered. I am going to just glue this flap down to have a side pocket. And honestly, that's probably all I'm gonna do for the cover. So, let's just put this flap down.
Okay, so while this is drying once again, I'm just going to go ahead and pick out some pages for my signatures. So I'm probably going to have three signatures in this journal. So I'm just going to create three stacks. <laughs> I have some paper here from the heirloom paper pad that I just showed you. So there's four. And let's see. They need to be no bigger than seven inches tall. And these are 12 by 12. So I'm probably going to make them no wider than 10 inches wide. So let me just cut these down first to Let's just go with like six and three quarters for the height. And then I could cut them down to like 10 inches wide. Or another thing that I like to do is just score it. So Let's say I want these pages to be four and a half inches. You can't even see where I'm scoring. <laughs> Let's say I want my pages here to be four and a half inches wide. So I'll score at four and a half, and then I'll score at nine. And then this extra piece here, I'm just gonna fold in. So I cut two pages at a time, but I will just fold this piece in, for example, and then I could just fold this all in half. And this would be one page all set like that. And this could either be a side pocket or a little flip out page something like that. Same thing for my next one here. And you could really just fold it whichever way you want to fold it. So you could even do something like this. Okay. And let me grab my other two sheets here and just cut those down to size as well. Maybe I'll do six and a half inches tall for these. And then I'll cut it down to nine and three quarters of an inch wide. And these ones I will just fold in half. Just like this. So those are four little pages. I also have these papers here, which are from the Vintage Treasures paper pad. And I think I got this at Walmart actually. So I'm just going to do the same thing with these papers. I'm also going to use some of this lined paper and I got this at the Dollar Tree. 
this is probably the perfect height. I am going to just fold this down and I'm just going to eyeball it this time because that's what I normally do. I don't usually go and score things when I'm making a journal. Sometimes I do, but for the most part, I kind of just eyeball it. So I'm going to fold this just like that. I'll fold this one in half and maybe I'll just tear off any excess. So that should still be good. Okay, so I have three of those. I also have some of this craft paper and some coffee dyed paper as well. So for now, I think that this is good. Now I'm just going to make three piles for my three signatures. So one, two, three, three of those. I've got three of these. And then just my patterned paper here, I will divide like that. So let me just put these in an order that I like. All right, next pile. And my last pile here, okay, so those are all set and in an order that I like. I'm just gonna set these aside. I'm going to just bring back my journal here and I'm going to do my binding a little differently. Usually I like to do the three hole pamphlet stitch. That's like my go-to for making journals, but I'm gonna do something a little different. Hopefully it's a little bit easier and quicker. So I'm just going to grab some string here, and this is just regular old string. There's nothing special about it, but you could use twine or stretchy elastic string or maybe even ribbon, anything that can be tied up because I'm basically just going to wrap this ribbon around my spine to hold in my signatures. So. I'm just going to unravel quite a bit of it. And I'm actually going to start on the outside of my journal here. And I'm just going to take my string and I'm going to kind of just hold it with my thumb towards the top of my spine there. And I want to make sure that there's a little extra string hanging out to the left there. So just hold that in place with your thumb and then I'm just going to wrap the string around my spine and then hold it with your thumb as well. And you can just keep doing this however many times you want, just depending on how many signatures you want. So since I have three signatures, I'm just wrapping it around until I get three strings here 
on the inside. So that is all set. All right, so once you have enough string there, I'm just going to cut off the excess over here on the right. All right, so we've got this little string on the left, this one on the right. Now, basically, I'm going to just take the end of my string here and I'm going to wrap it around and go underneath the rest of my strings here. So I'm going to just kind of lift everything up, take your end on the right, go over top, and then go under all of the strings. And you can just tighten that up by pulling on these two ends and just go ahead and tie a little knot or a double knot or a bow, whatever you like. <laughs> so that's what it's going to end up looking like. And then you can go ahead and just kind of separate your strings there like that and you could even string some beads if you wanted to along these ends or put some charms or just leave it like that but that's pretty much what it's going to look like on the outside and here we are on the inside so i hope that wasn't confusing I feel like if you just actually try it yourself and play around with it in person, then it gets easier and you get the hang of it more. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do for my binding. And then I can literally just take back all of my papers here and slide them underneath my string. So let's see. I guess I'll have this be my first signature. So... I'm just going to lift up my string here and slide these underneath. Hopefully they will go. Okay. So this will be like my first little signature. I will grab my next one here and just stick that in. So sometimes it is easier to use a stretchier elastic type string, but as you can see, it's still doable with regular old string. <laughs> so there is my next signature and my last one. And that's our quick little journal. So now I can go ahead and just embellish this some more, do some more decorating, but I will probably end the video here for now, but you can see how that just came together. And all we did was tie a little ribbon around our spine or a little string. So, I think that this type of method has lots of pros and cons. I guess maybe the cons for me would be just sometimes the signatures might shift around a little bit as opposed to if you actually sewed them into the spine, of course. Also, if you have maybe like smaller pages, let's just do this for example. If you have smaller pages, there's a chance that they could also shift up or down, but I mean, they're still gonna be in the journal. So that might be something that would bother some people. Um, what else? I don't really think there's any other cons, for me at least, for this type of journal. I think there are definitely more pros Personally, I feel like it's quick and easier to put together. You can take out the pages to decorate. 
So you can easily take out any page, you know, wherever it is in the journal. So I really like that feature as well. And then obviously you can also easily add in pages wherever you want and whenever you want. So you could just be constantly adding to journals like these for years and years to come, for generations to come, you know, your family could just keep adding their family recipes year after year. I will make a part two and I will do a little bit of decorating with you guys since some of you have told me that you like to see the decorating process or you want to see the decorating process. So I'll do a little bit of that with you in the next video. But other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this one and don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel for more crafty fun and inspiration and leave me a comment down below. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Happy crafting and huge hugs!